Today is the first podcast I've done since before the lockdown. I've done quite a few before the lockdown. And I did ask our special guest, Mr. Tom Wynn, um, some time ago if he would do a podcast and he agreed. I said, yes, I would. But then things happened and it never got done. But now we're finally here. And I want to start off, Tom. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for your time, mate. No, you're welcome, mate. Um, you did a good podcast with um, Master Gail some time ago. I had great, uh, great interest in listening to that. And you went into your early days uh, prior to actually even joining clubs. Um, so they've heard all about that. But what I want to do is I want to shoot straight in and say, where did the boot man come from? The boot man came from um, John Dawson. Yeah. From the Warriors. Yeah. He was a great writer. Yeah. And he, he used to write articles for him. Yeah. I've never believed in people, I don't like people calling themselves names, like I'm this and I'm that. And when I fought for the Warriors, we went to... Um, Norwich to fight um, the English contact karate, Korean karate, Mick Blackwell. Yeah, he used to be. Yeah, yeah Mick Blackwell. Yeah. He used to be. Uh, yeah, back in the day, that was. Yeah. probably Tang So Do. He was on the first <laughs> type one of people. Yes, he was. Mick Blackwell. So we went down there as the Warriors. We were invited, and I mean, there was like over two thousand people from their squad, and then we got. We were like the main show because Tony Sykes for Richard Vince full contact in the show as well. So I've really? got a video of that. I'll okay. be putting that on again. Yeah, that would be interesting. And he just won the national boxing championships as well. Is Richard this Vince. Vince? Richard Vince. Richard Vince. Not Tony Sykes now. Tony Sykes was a full contact fighter, Bob yeah. Sykes' brother. Yeah. But they had a bit of beef going because in one of the um, Clash of the Titans. They had a bit of a ding dong and then rolled on the floor and then he bit him. Yeah. Tony bit Tony him. Tony bit him, yeah, and then he got up and shot. Yeah, him I remember doing that, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then from there they had a lot of beef about mm. it. So then they thought, well, we'll have this show, but we'll have it full contact. Mm. And there was a couple of full contact shows. And then always in the Warriors, oh, there was like the th- like welters or whatever, and then middles. So the first one was always Joe, then it was normally Billy, mm-hmm. and then I was the third lighty. But by the time we got to the third in most teams, I was either fighting the middle way or like heavy weight, which didn't bother me because I'd fight anyone and mm-hmm. whatever weight they are on the teams and that. And that day, the middle of the so-called welterweight come out of the first fighter, and I mean, I'm not that tall, but he was about a foot and a half above me, and I thought... He's never a well to eight. He's probably a lot everywhere, but it didn't bother me. Mm. So they were pretty rough with the fighting. They were like kicking low, like, just grabbing and doing everything. It wasn't clean. Mm. So I came out and fought, was fighting the guy. And then he was just kicking my legs and everything. So what I basically did is I thought, because he's so tall, I'll just keep him away with my legs. So basically for the three minutes of the fight, I was just hopping around like like a bunny, like a couple of people say, oh, you're like a tiger, like a tiger, and all of that, jumping around the bench. And I said, I don't say. So I was moving round, and I was just throwing up loads of kicks, jumping kicks, spinning kicks, jumping, turning kicks, everything, and using my hands as well. And then after that, John Dawson did a write-up, and then he called, he, he did, they did another article with me with the MAI, and then he named me the bootman. Oh, right, right okay. Kicking. Cause, but, yeah. Yeah, sorry. But his idea, the bootman was as well, is because I'd fight every weekend, anywhere, anytime, and it was like, bring your boots, bring your gear, and you'll fight. Because every tournament I go to, even now, they go, you're fighting, or you're fighting. So, you know, if I'm watching or whatever, they're like, oh, you're fighting, because I fought everywhere. Mm. I used to fight every weekend, whatever tournament it was. Mm. But that's where I was given the name of the bootman. Okay. Do you do you think that it gave you a lot more experience once you moved away from TAGB? Um, but prior to that, I believe you started your own club up. It was called what? Westminster. Gang. 
West Midlands Taekwondo, was it? Start no, Kung Gang. Then Kung Gang. No, it was no, Kung Gang. Straight Kung Gang, was Kung it? Gang. Okay, where's Kung Gang come from? Kung Gang is when I left the TRUB, mm-hmm. I went with Master Roy Alden. Mm-hmm. And that was Midwest Taekwondo. Midwest, Wanda. sorry, not West Midwest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Midwest Taekwondo. Yeah. So I went under the umbrella of that. Mm. And I can't remember his name now. One of the other fighters had left in Stanford, I think, and he's just had a knee up, uh, had his leg up. Yeah. Lightweight. Okay. I can't remember his name now. I can see him, but I can't remember his name. It, it wasn't um, him who fought in the 1985. Yes, Charlie Lee. Um, yeah. Oh, come on. Little lightweight for the be. I fought great, him. Great, great fight. I fought him. First kick I ever threw, we come. David Mears. David Mears. David Mears. Knight him with a side Machine kick. gun kick, yeah. they used to call yeah. that. Yeah. So David, yeah, that's right. He's I a contact- fighter, David. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was a brilliant fighter. Yeah. yeah. I contacted Master Roy Alden mm-hmm. and I met him in Coventry and he said, well, you want to open pubs with me? And I said, well, of course. So I joined him, and then obviously David left the, the TRGB then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just getting ready to go. He was doing Thai boxing, he was going to go and fight and getting sponsored to fight in Thailand. All right. Um, and then I entered the championships and won them. And then I fought Dave, and I beat Dave, uh, Dave Mears, on, on that competition. And I think I'm, I met Will Henry, who you've probably met. From your party pool in that way. You probably have a competition. Yeah, probably not. I don't, um, don't recognise me. And I basically went from there, but we were called Midwest. Mm, that's right, I remember that. So I opened a club in Birmingham, <coughs> Spark Hill, which is across from Simmer, mm. Geeko or Simmer. And, and that was a mile away from Master Donnelly. All right. And then, because I was living in Solly Hill at the time, mm. I opened a club. A mile away from Master Oliver. So, and I've never yeah. taught. I've never so taught before. You were really popular. Yeah. I, well, that's my area. Right? <laughs> so, no one yeah. owns it. No. But like when I say to people, and I said years ago, but the money just like cottoned on to it. You go to Birmingham, Bulgy Triangle. How many Indians are there? How many different curries are there? You go into one curry. And you go, it's not hot enough for me. Try another one, I oh, like that. Yeah. It's a different flavour. Yeah. So it doesn't mean because someone is just teaching Taekwondo or Kung Fu or Karate that they're the best. You have to search around. Yeah. And it's like not everyone's someone's cup of tea. Yeah. I used to go to demos and I'd go, I'd see someone, and if they're talking at the wall, going, yeah. And the training fees are on them, and I'll go, just walk out. Mm. I want someone to talk to me. Mm. I want them to show them, show them what we can do, but not what I can do. When I did demo, I didn't, I did the break and everything at the high level, but I got the students from beginner right up to the grades to take part in that because mm. it would show people, mm. you know, mm. this is where you start. Mm. And this is where you can end yeah, up. But when yeah. you do just black belts, yeah. everyone's thinking, yeah. I'll never be able to do that. That's true. Yeah. So, but the thing is, as I say, everyone's got a different flavour, everyone mm. teaches different. Mm. And my flavour is a mixture of Taekwondo, but I'm not pigeonholed as Taekwondo because I've done a lot of things and I always read up on things, mm. I always add things to what I do. Mm. So, that's how I started. I've never taken a class in my life, mm. so I just went through. But I made that three times as hard as it was in the TADB or the UKTA because I wanted my students to go out there and, you know, shine, basically. Mm-hmm. So what, what's Kung Gang? What does Kung Gang mean? Yeah, sorry, I'll pull myself back. Rewind. Rewind. Pull up, as I say. I went to the WTF Championships because we had many Korean masters coming out of WTF with Master Alden because we were trying to get a figurehead. Um, and it was in Blackpool. And then I, I got a leaflet at the tournament because then I, I went to Belgium and won the Belgium full contact WTF. I mean, not the points they do now, mm-hmm. proper, you know, mm-hmm. what it was like. Yeah. Um, and then 
I won in I won in Belgium, then I went to Blackpool, and then they had a, a leaflet about all the tournament. I was looking through, and it just had the means of the patterns. And Kumgang is the mountain in Korea. That's right. Um, and it's a pattern in WTS. It is, yeah, it is. But what I liked is the meaning of it meant too strong to be broken or synonymous with a diamond. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So I always had that in the back of my mind. I thought. Well, one day if I do something myself, mm. you know, I hadn't any thoughts then, then I'll call it come again. Mm. Um, is the spirit of the Korean people the one that's got uh, Lake Chonji in the top? Yes. And yeah. then you do this this W-shaped block, and I believe the WTF call it mountain block. Yeah. Because one represents uh, Bak J um, yeah. mountain, the other one is Kung Gang. Yeah. The spirit of the Korean people, strength of the yeah. Korean people. And when I saw it, I thought, that's a clever, that's a clever little title. I, I didn't Cause know I, that, because you I, always yeah, learn every day. Yeah, I, 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 I knew where it, where it come from, and yeah. I thought, fair play, John, that's, that's, it, it that's was clever. The, it was the too strong to be broken, yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. my strength, philosopher. The strength of the crew people. Yeah, mm. and that's why I, you know, yeah. resonated to that, mm. because, and it's a diamond, and obviously you can't cut a diamond, can you? No. So, too strong to be broken is your willpower <coughs> to push through and do everything mm. you do, mm. not just in Taekwondo and mm. martial arts, in life. life. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's the discipline I put into my students. Mm. Is, as a club instructor, did you tend to emphasise more on, on the technical, on the patterns, or the sparring, or a, um, a level of both? This is the thing people... Being, a, being but, known for a fighter, what they don't yeah, realise is yeah. you're very, very good at patterns as well. Because I've seen you perform. Um, but pe people recognise you pure more so as a fighter. But when you're teaching your students, do you put more emphasis on the sparring? Or the patterns? Or the self-defence or anything? Or a balance of all? I'll take you back to Man of Contrast. Well, I've read that book, you obviously book. Yeah, yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, following all the, yeah. the books that I've, thousands of books that I've read, and the man of contrast, to get to your black belt on your journey, you've got to do everything. So it's no good being a one-trip pony. So mm. when I teach, I teach everything technically. It's like me, it's like if that was... If that was off cock, that would put me out and I'd have to move <laughs> your CD, yeah. And you know, no, no, it's yeah. just because it's not right. That's not a CD, it's got to be, that, that telly there is central, if yeah, you yeah, put yeah. that in, it's there. Yeah. I've done surveying and everything yeah. in my life and building work. And I can't sit somewhere and I go, that, that paper isn't drying properly. Things have got to be done right. There's no grey, it's black or it's white. So when I teach, you have to do it. Proper, proper techniques and everything. The same emphasis on everything. Yeah, near, is, near enough is never good enough, is it? No. Uh, I'm the same. I am the same. These guys will tell you that you know I'm, I'm hot on. If the stance has got to be one and a half by one, it's got to be yeah. one and a half by one. Not this, not that. Yeah. You know, it's got to be it's as it be is. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's how I trained myself. Not this hasn't been taught to me. Mm. This is something that's in me mm. that. I must do that correctly because mm. if you don't if you don't do it then I can relate you're not to that. you're not achieving mm. it. So mm. but as you say with the patterns and that, when I went on the open circuits, <coughs> I won the one year the grand championships beating Billy Bryce in the fighting, I won the musical patterns and I won the Korean so people, so that, I did the people three. don't recognise you. That's why I ask because people know you tend to know you if they don't know yeah. you more of more because yeah. of your fighting experience. But I know that you're very technical as well. You see, the people that know me are back in the day like yourself mm. because I used. I mean, I was I was clever because I'd do the patterns and then I'd put music in, but it'd be music of the everyone would like. So I like reggae and soul and everything, so I was using top tunes of the day, Shabba Ranks, Mr Loverman. And then as soon as I hear that music, they'd know what I was on. So they'd come round and I'd have crowds around me, round me, and yeah. then they'd all be shouting Shabba, Shabba. And then it'd be like now with Harry Styles, I'd do a pattern with that music. Because <laughs> even if you didn't like it, 
people who love music could come round and watch and see what's going on there. And then what I did to change it is I did breaking in my patterns. Oh, so right, I got yeah. so decided yeah, yeah, yeah. in the board like yeah. that. And he was going, I was going, you're all right, I'll, I'll go through the board and did a flying psychic. And then I got a couple of them, and then all the judges were like going, well, what's that? Well, that's the application. Mm. Mm. But the application of showing the pattern when you've got students mm. and around you, and what you're doing showing that, well, how the techniques work. Mm. So, and then I got all fancy suits then. <laughs> so I spent loads of money on getting different suits with the boot man on and different colours and flashy had phase and a lot of them sponsoring me and that just for suit. But it's all been to be the best technically because if you haven't got the technique it's like a lot of people today i'll see a picture or they'll say and they'll say well, what do you think of that when i go to competition i mean do you want the honest truth if someone's a sixth seventh or fifth down i'll say I, I don't know where that pattern's come from but the techniques are wrong yeah. the foot position and the yeah. sensi yeah. so I can't really comment on that. I would drop points off them when they give a 10 and 9. Yeah. There's no such thing as a 10. No, no. If you're a 10, you've got no, no place for improvement. That's, fl that's flawless, absolutely yeah. perfect. No one is perfect. is perfect. No, I agree. So I there agree. has to be room for improvement. I, and if you think you're the best and you're not, and you're going to stay there, no one's going to come up and beat you. You've, you've got the wrong principle with yeah. it. I've, I've seen some, some good... Patterns people. Remember the second World Championships in 1991, um, a guy come over from um, America <coughs> called Garrett Warren. Oh yeah, I've watched all the World yeah. Championships. And the rules stated it had to be a traditional Taekwondo pattern. Yeah. Well he did a made up thing, but it was absolutely stunning. Yeah. It was unbelievable, the crowd was screaming. And they wouldn't score him. They told him he had to do one. So he did... Um, What's the WTF pattern where you do your black belt? Yeah, their equivalent of Chung Mo. Um, oh, I can't think of it now. And he did that. And again, absolutely flawless. Yeah. And he won it. And I was sat next to Ray Smathers, who had won the 1988 yeah. World Championships. Yeah. And I said, Ray, do you think you could, be, you could have beaten him? He went, no, not a chance. No. no. Putting that to one side, you have a look at some of the performances today. Do you think that it's almost like martial gymnastics rather than martial arts. You know, they're doing this six yeah. o'clock kick with, with the top, with yeah. the toes pointing up and it's supposed to be, a, a you know, this kind of thing. Um, I, I admire the skill of some of the acrobatics and that, mm. but to me, that's not the martial arts <coughs> side of it. You can flip and do kicks. Mm. Um, it's like when I was in FSK years ago when I was going for the Grand Championship, and there was a young lady, I can't remember her name now, and she used to do all the high kicks and everything, but a lot of gymnastics. And there used to be another guy like uh, Mark Strange, and yeah, yeah, similar yeah, to that yeah, Kung Fu. Yeah. And I entered one of the other <coughs> ones, so I had to kind of beat her in this, because I was trying to do all the different disciplines to be the grand champion. Mm. And then they asked me to ref, and then they asked this other guy from the Chinese style, and we sat down and I said, to be honest with you, I will only score the technical ability. The flips don't mean anything to me. Mm. They're good. Mm. But if you're a gymnast and you turn over to martial arts, I expect to see the techniques done mm. properly. Mm. You can do the gym, gymnastic one, but you've got to do the side kicks, the punching, there's got to be power. Mm. <clears throat> and I actually refed it, and me and the Chinese martial artist stylist, didn't give the 10 lot, they were going 10, 10, and I was going and 9 and 8, and I was going, the technical ability isn't that good. Mm. You know, the foot position, the hand position, mm. twisting back. That's the point, that's the point I was trying to make. You know, it's, so I scored it down. Yeah. Because I couldn't I couldn't give it a 10, mm. I couldn't give it a 7 really. Mm. But that backfired on me because the parents who are not martial artists can and did some refing and marked me down <laughs> in the Korean. <laughs> but All people right. said to okay. me, why did you mark it down? I said, well, technically it wasn't good enough. Yeah. So I admire the people skill. doing yeah. the flips, but yeah. if the techniques are not, and even some of the best stuff's in, mm. I mean, my heroes, I used to love Ron Sergio, mm. 
with his technique, his yeah. psyche. Yeah. And then he's, the, the way he did the patterns and yeah. we used to always have a combat yeah. fold out for the black yeah. black belt. And obviously yeah. John Chung. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, they and did, then Judy the Fernet. And Charlie Lee, they did yeah. the very first yeah. ever musical patterns that were seen yeah. in this country. Well, that I saw anyway at that yeah. 85 tournament. And I, I always remember, um, just just go back a little, rewind a little bit, what we were talking about, what's more important, blah, 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 sparring, what, what do you teach? Everything's you important. Yeah. yeah. And if you, were you there at that tournament, at that 1985 tournament? The one in uh, Lovington Spa. No, I, I'd left and okay. I go, oh no, I didn't go. Right. But I've had, I've, I've got the video. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jeff, Jeff Smith, who brought the American team over, mm. just while he was introducing Charlie Lee and John Chung to do this musical pattern, he made a little speech and he said, "They are what we class as a complete martial artist." He said, "The complete martial artist can win in the forms." They can win in the semi-contact, they can win in the full contact, and they can win in the street. That is the complete martial artist. And I never forgot that. I never that's forgot correct. that speech, and I totally agree with him. That's good. That's, yeah. that's how I talk, and that's, yeah. how, and that's what I said earlier yeah. when we were talking. People say to me, well, I can't do continuous. And I say, we can do points, can't you? And I say, yes. So, so what techniques are you using that? Mm. And they go, these are the techniques you've got. Well, all you have to do in the continuous it's going to be harder, longer, and you probably have to hit harder. Mm. And if you go in full contact, mm. like, if you want to do double chair, yeah, if I just got to use my legs, and I've got to use my hands, I can use my legs. Mm. Mm. You've, that's why I fight in everything, because if you want to be the best and try against everyone, mm. that, that evolves you yeah. as a fighter. Well, that, that was the reason that, uh, that Mark Weir left because um, I've got him through four world championships and he left to do this range fighting and evolved into the UFC yeah. which he was one of the original pioneers of the UFC in this country yeah. and then <coughs> from that he went into the MMA and, yeah. and everything else and he, and he said, he admitted to me, he said I do it as a personal test to see, to push myself to see how good I really am Yeah. and that's it, you know he well, loved, that's he loved the Taekwondo but it was restricted because it was yeah. semi-contact and he won everything there was going in Taekwondo. Yeah. So to test himself and push himself and progress himself, he moved away from it and went into the, the thing and the rest yeah. is history for that reason. So, yeah, I, 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 can, I can go with that. I want, let's, let's rewind them, Tom. Because I wanted to, we were talking about this before we started, and I want to go into it now a little bit, just so that, how did you get involved with the Legendary Warriors team? Basically, I'd, I read all the magazines and everything, and I was fighting in competitions and winning them. Um, and I went to the WACO Open Championships, and then on that day of the competition, I met Bob Sykes. Uh, I won't mention the two people are wrestling because that doesn't really make any difference. But I was fighting Bob, and then they, they just went crazy as he normally does. But it was points. Yeah. But it didn't bother me anyway because I, I was beating him. And then he was losing his rank a little bit because the two refs were messing about. One wasn't scoring me, one was scoring him, but they were, you know, mm. they didn't like each other. Mm. Um, and then basically we were fighting and we went from one side of the map to the wall and as I was coming back he smashed me in the face full on. So I had a few choice words with him and went back on and I beat him. Mm. And then I seen a write up in the magazine and I, because I buy things and I study everything, I looked at it and I basically said, rung him up and said, who's this team you got? I said, I fought the Charlie B, I should be in that team and I'll fight them. And he went, who are And I said, I'm Tom Wynn, I beat you last week. You never beat me. I said, I did. I said, you hit me with your best shot. And I said, I wasn't even fighting full. I was just playing, just playing points. It's tagging it. But I beat you. So I hope I should be in the team, shouldn't I, really, if I beat you? And then because of his brain and the, that, I'd left the chair to be. He saw the relevance of me leaving and, you know, some bad blood. Mm. Not from me, but from the charity, but that's way back in the past. 
and clever businessman and invited me to fight in the Warriors. Mm. But it twisted round that when I got there, I should have been in the Warriors and then I had to fight for Wales. Because I would have fought the TADB at my own weight. And then that's how I met Billy Priest. And the, the TADB, uh, the sorry, there was a couple of WHF fighters there. And we just threw this Welsh team together. Some of us were from Coventry, some of us from London. And then they called out the welterweight, which was Ray Gale. Then they stopped it and basically called out Roger Lawrence, who's light heavyweight. So he got up to fight, and then I just looked at the refs thinking, well, you know, you've called out the third fighter. So he got up, and then all the turned you be, were like, well, come on, whatever. So I just got up and fought Roger. Um, I'd had the flu before that, but we were sparring away, and even in the video now, he was getting a bit scrappy, because he was, he was just fighting out of anger, because obviously, Master Oliver was winding him up and they were all, you know, against me or whatever. And then we got into a bit of a clinch and I gave him an uppercut, hit him in the eye. And then he was like that and then the fight kind of ended. But they gave him the fight. And then after that, I had an interview with the Chargy B. Then I was going to be in the Warriors and then I asked to fight Roger because I said, I'll be prepared to fight for Roger you now. Yeah. So I just sparred a lot of bigger people because I asked to fight him mm. in the clash. And then I went to one of the MAIs and as I was leaving, Bob said, oh, take a picture for the magazine for next month. Then he went, go like that. So I went like that. Next month, off the page, the boot, Tom Wynn, is ready for the TADB, line up your boys. And he oh, got a picture, yeah. so he'd done that and I thought, oh. You idiot. Yeah. So he'd wound them up even more. Because yeah. I just went like, ah, come yeah. on then, let's yeah. go and fight. And it was like, line up your tear, your B-boys. And then we went into the fight. And basically, you know, I don't know anyone who's watched that fight that said I lost. Um, he got the win, but he'd lost it in the fight because I was hitting him in about four ridge hands at a time, smashing him. And then he followed me off the back fighting. And then I, when I walked back on, he smacked like dead, he tried to smash me in the face. And he just lost it. And that's where some bad bee from the, the bad, bad bee from the charity bee, <laughs> them not liking me being there, didn't help with that with Bob doing it. And then, because you've got to win at all costs, Roger was round up even more because normally he's, he's cool, isn't he? He's relaxed yeah, yeah, and he's yeah, laid yeah, back, yeah, yeah. you know, smiling, yeah. but he wasn't smiling. Oh, I, no, I know, I know what it was like in, in those days. And, and if I remember, I, I was actually there. Yeah. And um, is that where you went over to shake Dave Oliver's hand and he turned around his well, back on the Well, then the Simon's only thing to do with the following, yeah. mate. Whether I know I've been, you know, I won't use, I've, I've won that fight. Mm -hmm or that's this association or whatever, I always go over and shake the hand of my opponent mm. and the coach him. Mm. Mm. And then I went, well, I went past Roger and he pushed me like a two-year-old. <laughs> you know, I'll get out of my way. He loves you, you now. You know, I'm going to hit you or whatever. He loves you now. And then, um, and then I walked over to Dave Oliver and in front of 2,000 and whatever people, he just went and go away. So. Yeah. But, I remember that. Yeah, I do remember that. Oh, times move on. Well, yeah, I've, yeah. I've got no. Yeah. I've got to say, I've got no beef animosity to Roger the Turkey yeah. bit. I just fought. I, I say I, I've spoke to Roger about it, and he's got no no problem with you whatsoever. Now he said, "Nah," he said, "Them was in the day, like back in the day." He said, "I was thirty odd years ago." He said, "Well, yeah, he was just wound up, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. He just yeah. wound up." Yeah. But oh, I should have thought Ray. On seats, so don't I, I should have thought <laughs> Ray, but when I had the interview with Ray, he forgot. I should have to remind him. He said, "Our oh, pass never crossed." They did. Fought him in the FSK and beat him. What do you consider as your greatest achievement in martial arts? If you have somebody, you have to pick one thing of all the stuff that you've done, or students you've taught, or, or whatever. What do you? What would you consider your greatest achievement in martial arts? Mainly the principles that I've taught with it. 
as we spoke previously about too strong to be broken, people that have trained with me and then like we all get, they leave for certain reasons and they come mm -hmm. back. The amount of people that contact you and say, I wish I'd have carried on that. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of students where they've taken that philosophy through because mm -hmm. I've always told per parents, it's not fighting I'm teaching. No. I'm teaching a martial art, discipline, respect, and your children will evolve from this. Mm. So when I have a lot of people, like I've got Max and his son Ish, Max used to train with me years ago, then he came back and I've, I've gone to his club, Jason Rogers and various things like that, and then I coach him, coach his, his, his son, and now the penny's kind of dropped and now he's, he's done what I basically said he needs to do and he's won the world championships and he's going to win another one shortly. It's more when someone comes back and say, oh, I followed that discipline of what you've said in life. Because what you're starting at and finishing at, if you go for a job, you have to prepare. If you don't prepare, mm. the same as fighting, mm. you're not going to get that job. Mm. So it's the life skills that you're teaching. It's not just self-defence, confidence and... They would say, well, I'd have never done this job and I wouldn't have done that because it's a transferability of the skills and you can apply that in everything. If you start as a carpenter, you learn the techniques, you go through. Mm. If you're a plumber, mm. to get there, it's all technical. Mm. So with that, to me, the life skills that I've taught, that if they've had an injury, if something's happened to them, this is just a little stumbling block. Mm. Use the same, too strong to be broken, mm. mentally and physically, you carry on. Mm. And that's that's the most important thing to me. And not how many people have won tournaments or I've won tournaments, because I didn't do tournaments for people to think, oh, he's good. I did them because I was testing myself, mm. so that's mm. for me. Mm. Mm. Not for anybody else, mm. that's purely for me. Mm. So... When I've had some students ring me and come back and say, I was only there six months, so I wasn't that good. But what you taught me and how to defend myself, mm. four people attacked me, four, it was a lady, Jan, four men attacked me. She said, but if I didn't know how to cover up and protect myself, she said I'd have been dead now, I'd have been in hospital. So it's, as I say, whatever we go through, mm. At the end product is you must be able to fight and defend yourself and it's standing up for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Whether you stand up for yourself, you have to do it physically or mentally. Mm. Always stand up for yourself. Too strong to the broken is that, it's that all, philosophy. It, it, it's, it's, it also builds your, so the training builds your self-confidence yes, at that moment. Because yeah. people will say, how do, I've had parents come to me and say, how does it work? I said, I don't know, I just know it does. And it's the, the training and the preparation in the training and what you have to go through, whether you're there for six months, 12 months, two years or everything else, that, that builds your self-confidence up. When you say, oh, it's not about fighting, it's not. No. It's, it's instilling into a student that self-confidence that they know if they have to, they can. And yeah. that's why they don't do it. They don't, yeah. they don't need to fight, but they know that if they really have to, then they've got the confidence to yeah. do it through their training. And, and that's what I think it is. I mean, I believe in the tenets of Taekwondo. Yeah. And that applies to everything. Mm -hmm. It's the transferability of it. As I say, you're going for a new job, yeah, it's new. What you do when you started, you started as a beginner. You learned, you went through. Mm -hmm. You use the same thing, but failing to prepare is preparing to fight. Yeah, well, I always remember my well, well, father doing me. that, and, the tough, and there's nothing, you know, I always remember that, what he said. It's funny it's you true. should say that. He the said tough, exactly when the, the tough same. gets going, yeah. the tough, you know, it's a fact. He said exactly the same to me. I always I always have done in my mind, yeah. and, you know, mm. great quotes mean a lot, don't they? Yeah. But yeah. as I say, if they go for a job, then it's the same thing. Mm. If I do something I haven't done before and I try it, it's the same discipline. You have to persevere. It's your self-control, yeah. indomitable spirit. Yeah. You, they're not just something you learn to do with grading. I mean, one question I always used to ask my students, 
and I'll probably ask it, you know, there's five target, uh, tenants of Taekwondo and you see it in a black belt. And I say, if there was a six, what would yours Loyalty, be? Loyalty, without a shadow of a doubt. So people would go, what? Loyalty, humility, what? yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Loyalty. Yeah, and that kind of, because see, I never taught by the book. I wouldn't go, this is what you've got to go and learn away if you're mm. going yell about. Mm. Because what I'd get is if people came from a different style, mm. they'd be doing a grade and I'd go, okay, that's good. And they'd say, show me all the kicks, you know. They'd show me a load of kicks and I'd go, okay. So, what's that reverse turning kick in Korean? And I'd go, oh, I don't know. Don't ever show a technique that you don't know what you're showing. Yeah. It's good that you're practising it yeah. and you're looking forward because, I mean, what did we do? We'd stay back at the grading. People of today go to grade and they go, you need to look at what is the next stage that you've got to do. Yeah. Same as fighting. We'd stay to the end of that competition to worth watch the top fighters, wouldn't we? Yeah. And learn off them. Yeah. So they'd always go, well, why, why, I don't want books. I'll teach you what I want you to do. I'll teach you other things outside of that. But when you go to grading, if you've learned something and I've told you, or if you've got another technique that you haven't learned, then in the grading, next time you grade, you show me a technique, I want you to know what that is in Korean. Because yeah. a lot of Taekwondo today, some of the, the Taekwondo I've seen, they don't, they don't teach in Korean and they don't learn... Yeah. Korean. It's a potato mine, isn't it? They, so, they tell you that the pe cause I used to Korean. say to people, you know, mm. a lot of people you meant to go, I did turning kick. Okay, what's the turning kick then? The turning kick. Well, what martial art did you do? I did karate. So, what is the turning kick in karate? Marashigeri. Yeah, Marashigeri. Mm. Or Taekwondo or mm. Kung Fu. Mm. You learn the history, you learn mm. the, the philosophy. Yeah. You go to another country, you visit it. You follow their ways, you, mm -hmm. you learn out about it. Mm -hmm. It's there's fifteen volumes to talk wonder, yeah. it's not there. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not get to black belt, that's the beginner. You keep going. Mm -hmm. Also in my life, you know, some of it's some of it's a doing things. Some of massive amount of it is the physical, the Taylor Kwan, but the Do is learning the philosophies, learn developing yourself as a person. You know, your theory comes into it, learning the history, learning what these people actually went through. You can't learn it two lines of a pattern meaning. No. Behind that two lines is a whole story. Yeah. You know, so how much you want to delve into it is up to you. Yeah. You learn that to pass your grade, okay. But if you really are interested, then there's a whole world behind those pattern meanings that you can look into. Well, and yeah. that will help you to understand. Yeah. yeah. You know. What about the greatest regret, Tom? Biggest regret? I know you don't really well, go in for regrets, but I, I don't. You know. I don't have any regrets. The, the only regret that was out of my control was it was brilliant when the charity B was formed, but for me, it'd been better if it was another twelve months on because I just took my black tape and I wanted to take my first degree with Master Grandmaster Ricky Hart. Mm. So that's the only regret. That's mm. not. It's should we get because it's out of my control. You only can try control what mm. you control. Mm. But I don't have any regrets no. with martial no. arts, mate. Didn't think I, I, I As Frank Sinatra said he did it his way. His way, right, yeah. And then you you said to him about the Maverick and I was going to Maverick and then a footballer. What's his name? <laughs> what was that footballer you said? Similar to Jerry Barton or something. Oh, Jerry Barton. Oh, I knew the bloody hell was Jerry Barton. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked he, he, in and I went, He was what? a rebel. He was a you rebel. Must, you must have been what? <laughs> yeah. You must have been what, Jim Longstreet? <laughs> I'm not a rebel. Yeah. Cockney Rebel was a rebel. Cockney Rebel. No, I don't have any regrets. No. Okay. It, I wouldn't be sitting here today if I didn't leave, mm. do my own thing, mm. follow my own path. And mm. it's better like doing your own thing, isn't it? Mm, mm. And I must have done something good in. with all these, yeah, these people. You do what you believe in. Well, you do it. what you believe is right. You know. You all put your mix in mm. to whatever you're doing. You talk one day, but mm. I have no regrets now. Okay. All right. This is one that you won't like. 
All right? <laughs> you won't like this at all, no, because I know. I know you. All right? Give us a quick total of the medals and trophies you've won off the top of your head. A few hundred, I suppose. I never counted them. Most of them are in the bin. I don't, I don't mean anything. Just... How many world championships have you won? Uh, six. Six. Europeans? Two. Two. When I was at the age of 55. Yeah, that was my next question. The last one was one at what age? You've just answered that. It's 55 years 55, of age. 55, yeah. Yeah, my, my last one was... Um, I was... Uh, I took silver in the World Championships. That was in... The year before lockdown. And that was in the World 2019, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That was that, the last one I did. Yeah, and I was 67 yeah. in that one when I did that. Well um, but yeah, okay. Well, I, have, I have followed you. <laughs> but you people me. say to me, uh, do you still do martial arts? What's well, the way of life? Why am I not going to do it? Do you, are you fighting? Yeah, I fight. I'm a fighter. So that I'm going to the WMO and then I know when I go there, they're all going to your fighting today. <laughs> but between me and you, uh, well, I don't know if you know, I'm doing the martial arts show now. In Doncaster? Yeah. And I'm going to the... Yeah, I think you, we said, you yeah. told me this a few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. You, so, you're, you're actually teaching on it, aren't you? Yeah, I'm teaching yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I am in... Well, don't take this the wrong way. The way uh, Paul said it. I'm in between Bill Wallace and Cynthia Rothrock on the Sunday. Okay. But I haven't met Cynthia since 1986 no, when we did the Geeko Geeko show with Bill. Come on then. This is this is one that uh, that I wanted to ask you anyway, and um, we sort of went on off on a few tangents. Yeah. Tell me the story about how you sparred Bill Wallace at the Geeko Spectacular. Uh, well, originally I'll tell you that I think I've told you the true story. Mm -hmm. I knew Tim Ward, and you know. Oh. Fanatic like I am now, and I used to go down the shop and he'd be like, Shut the door, shut the door. Oh, I've got this event going on, or I've got this magazine, and these are Bruce Lee. I'd be like, Oh, aren't you then? And then he said, I've got this show going on, would you like to come down and train with all these stars? And I was like, What? Eric Lee, Taddy Shamashi, who was a weapons master. Mm -hmm. uh, there was two guys from Hawaii, I can't remember the names now. Bill Wallace, and I was like, Bill Wallace, you, you want me to do some training with Bill Wallace? Mm. When is it? <laughs> Took three days off work, and me and my Alden Miller said, yeah, we'll come down. But originally, the story was that Kim Stones and Kenny Walton were going to be on there, because obviously, mm. you know, they were the superstars of Taekwondo, mm. you know, at that point, and, mm. you know, my heroes anyway. Mm. Um, and then I turned up at the Holiday Inn in Birmingham, and then I was introduced to everybody, and then we had a, as Bill had a bird, we had a good chat, and, and then as we went along, he said, should we go and do a bit of sparring? So we went to do a bit of sparring, which I thought was going to be light sparring, but you know how well Bill, Bill was back in them days, you know, mm. he wasn't a middleweight, he was probably a lot heavyway, mm. solid, mm. Um, and great boxer as well as a kicker. And then we went upstairs, just in a room, me and him, and we started sparring, and I was just like, you know, keeping away from him and that, and just kind of free sparring, you know, like one for one sparring type thing. But then he smashed me straight in the mouth, and I was like, what's going on here? So he was kind of laying the intimidation on, like, you know, where, you know, if you tried on with me, you're going to get the whatever. <laughs> and I was like, but we had a great time, I went round with him, I was learning learning things off him, and he was a great bloke. Mm. And then he'd give me some pictures, I'll try and find him when I see you again. But when he did the stretching machine, he said, you'll be doing this soon. You'll be doing all this. You, you'll go on to be a great fighter and all of it. But previous to that, I had stories saying that, you know, if you met him, he'd be naughty, and then he'd smash you up. But when he hit me then, I thought, I wasn't prepared for that. So. We did legs and then we did hands, and then Alden did the same, but I never did the legs with Bill on the show, which was never, I don't think it was put, I've got the uncut version of the Geeko Spectacular, 
and then the original one which wasn't too good and then he didn't do the legs with me but then on the night we did sparring hands and legs so I thought this is the show now I'm just going to keep him away flicking kicks and you know we had a bit of a laugh and banter and then everyone was kind of taking over then shouting for me rather than Bill oh. and he's going it's my show or whatever <laughs> but I was just throwing a lot of kicks on him but that's what happened in the end and I just kept away and then a lot of people would go, oh, you were quicker than Bill and all this. I said, look, I was just keeping away from Bill, I wasn't sparring. Mm. Yeah. He, he, you know, if we'd have done a proper fight, then that's a different thing mm. because he was, he wasn't he was a, full he, contact he champion. He was a brilliant boxer, that. wasn't he? As oh, well. he's his hands were, boxer. Yeah. even back then, people I mean, I don't know. People think of him as a kicker, but he's yeah, a very, very yeah. good boxer. Oh, well, yeah. it's like when people say to me, well, you use your hands, yeah. What's well, so out? My leg is like a jab. I use my psychic as a jab. No, no. If I don't crack your ribs with it, that's setting you up for the ridge hand of the hands. No. Where most people have stopped, my thing was jam them and bam them, so jam them no. if you clash with kicking and then hit them because most of them won't use their hands anyway. No. So that's a jab. No. Think of a jab, how powerful that is, but your legs are three times, four times more. Powerful, mm. and that's your range with your leg. When you get in there, you, you're an hand range, that's so you've it. got to use your hands. So, yeah. but it was a great experience. And then I did a seminar with him. You know, he was one of my heroes on that because we had all the books, his stretching and everything. Mm. And then to actually be on the stage with him, mm. so mm. it was just really a play spar us about. We didn't. I mean, he basically said to me, we were watching all the people preparing and practicing, and he went. Get, we're getting, he was getting a burger and a burger and a burger, you know, and he's like eating. And he sit there and go, we ain't got to rehearse, we're just going to go and spar. Mm. We didn't, he didn't go, oh, you do this and you do yeah. that, because no. that had him in full. So mm. I just did like a, like a little free spar with him. Mm. Like if I was sparring a student and I was just like, you know, mm. tapping and whatever. But if it had come to the point that he smacked me and then I was in front of all of that, it wouldn't have been, it would have been different. The mm. mindset had been, okay then, mm. if you want it, I'll, mm. I'll do it. Because mm. I'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. Whatever way they are in the teams, I've always fought the heavyweights. And even when I come back, I fought for, well, I fought in all the world championships, WMO, ICO, ISCA. I come second in the heavyweights in the Irish Open. I did them all, I've done all of them, I kept saying you've won that one, can you win this one? And I just went on and won all of them. Mm. But in the teams, I always fought heavyweights, that's why I fought, I fought Alfie, I fought Tony Sykes, I fought all, most of the top heavyweights around in the teams. Mm. Mm. Well, on that then, what's the future for Tom Wynn? Well, the future at the moment is, uh, I'm just getting ready, prepared for the martial arts show in Doncaster mm -hmm. and then the awards night but um, that's how I started, I thought of coming back because in 2015 I was on holiday and Mark Strain sent me a message saying do you know any people that want to do a film and I said well I'll send it out on my page and then while I was there I thought I'll have a go at that. Yeah. So I sent him back and I said, well, what's, like we are half Irish say, what's the crack? And he went, well, you come down and we'll do a shoot and all that. And I said, well, can I come down? And he went, yeah, I went, okay, when is it? So I turned up with a film shooting with him. And then a lot of people came there. Thomas Stodd was there with his brother. Yeah. Um, and then there was people who didn't know martial arts. And we're, I was basically there all day. Mm. And then it was a kung fu horror, horror thing. And I was like, well, oh, I'll get what's going on. But it was a good experience because it was a lot of, because yeah. like, at the one point you had to go from one end of the room to another room, pretending you were a zombie. <laughs> and like, I did all that and then improvised with them. And then me and Mark did a bit and he said, well, I'm going to have a chainsaw and you've got to react to what I'm going to do. <laughs> so we were doing all of this, and I was, I was going, you know, like, 
uh, Monty Python, remember? Merely a flesh wound, yeah, you know, yeah, and they yeah, chopped yeah, it yeah, and yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. And then he cut my arm off and I've all that. Like, uh, and all of that. And then in the end, I went on the floor and I've got no arms and legs. And I've got up and then he went, You're supposed to be dead. I said, I've still got my head. <laughs> not I'm not there. dead. <laughs> You know, merely a flesh room. Yeah, yeah. And then I did that, which was quite fun. Yeah. But then when the film came off, it went, I met the director, Chong Lee or something, and it kind of went off, mm. like on another tangent. And then he said, oh, do you want to come? And I went, if I haven't got a part in it, I'm not going to do it. But there were people that weren't martial artists mm. that were there. And I was thinking, mm. I don't think it really come to mm. cage fights and that, but... All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank very you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate that.